Come on. Team USA lost to France in the FIBA, not championship game. What were they playing for like fourth, fifth place? Like, oh my goodness. One of the most disappointing runs of Team USA they've ever had. But to a lot of people, this wasn't a surprise. Going into the USA training camp or team formation, we saw that a lot of people turned down the actual spots on the team and the USA basically had to send its D-list celebrities to go play and compete in the FIBA International Basketball Championship. Now, don't get me wrong. We all know that this wasn't their best team. However, they had way more than enough talent to get the job done. You see this? You see these? These are basketball cards. And you see this one right here? This, my most prized possession? That is a Donovan Mitchell Silver Prism, one of the most rarest basketball cards. And he balled out this summer, their best scorer, and they still couldn't get the job done. And there is only one and one reason only why they didn't do it. Lack of preparation. Why on earth is half the invites that you sent out getting literally rejected when you're the most prestigious basketball international team that the land has to offer? Especially this was like around a month or less than a month to the tournament. Like, like is the USA this arrogant, this cocky? Short answer. Yeah, they, they are. This video isn't just to rip on USA basketball. We all know it's horrible. This video is to fix something using preparation before it turns out to be a absolute disaster like FIBA was. And I know it's far away, but essentially, I wanted to get this video out there so the NBA maybe has a chance to see this and hopefully incorporate these changes. In this video, I wanna fix NBA All-Star Weekend and I have just the ideas to do it. Let me know if these ideas you think would work and we can fix this together, flight crew. I'm telling you, if we work this, NBA All-Star Weekend could actually be good. By the way, my name is Fly Stewie. This is the Uneducated Investor Podcast. We do investing and connect that to pop culture. Videos three times a week. Smash that like button because this is how this channel grows and this is how people will see it. It really helps it grow when you smash that like button. So if you haven't done it, please do it. I'm begging you. So let's fix NBA All-Star Weekend. The first fix, the very first thing that we need to do is the All-Star Game. Every year we talk about how it doesn't look like they're trying, there's no urgency on any of these players, and it essentially just ends up being like a dunk fest. They run up the score and like the fans are out of it, the players are out of it, it's under entertaining. It's hard to just sit there and watch the full two hour, three hour event. So what do I propose to fix this event? Very simple, instead of two teams in NBA All-Star Weekend, we do four teams. That's team A, team B, team C, team D. Players in total that end up going to NBA All-Star Weekend and selected as All-Stars, these four teams would, instead of 12 people on two different teams, let's do six people on four different teams. Each captain will pick their team, kind of like the NBA draft, and then they will face each other in a bracket-like system. The way the brackets would work is just like NBA quarters, so think of it like this. Team A will face against Team B in the first quarter, that would be the 12 minutes. The winner of that game would sit off in the second quarter, while Team C and Team D play against each other. Now the winner of a B will face the winner of C D in the second half in two quarters basically or two halves. So it may sound complex but really it's still 48 minutes of gameplay except you have a chance to be eliminated in the first quarter. Could you imagine that? LeBron's team versus Anthony Davis's team and then Anthony Davis's team loses? LeBron's not letting that happen. Guess what? They're going to try. Their minutes are lower, so less risk of injury. And we're going to get that competition that we need. Now you may be thinking, what happens if the first quarter goes into overtime? Do we really want that overtime in the first, second quarters? Like, that's ridiculous. What I'm proposing is more of a soccer system, golden goal. So overtime starts, you do a jump ball, you get the ball as a team, and the first team to score wins. 
If you foul, you're automatically on the bench. Everyone only gets one foul, so that keeps all the flagrant or hard fouls out of there. And you're automatically on the bench. So if two people foul on your team, you have five against four, you're losing, buddy. Think about all the storylines this can create, all the drama, all the tense situations. All of a sudden, fans can cheer on their team and if you lose, you will feel so bad. So everyone's gonna be trying. We'll get to see all our stars that we wanna see and we'll be able to create so much more storylines and so much more drama. And all in all, we'll actually create a competitive atmosphere if we switch to this four team system. So please share this video so the NBA can hear this and actually make the changes before the NBA All-Star Weekend actually starts. Now the second thing in all NBA All-Star Weekend that we really have to change is the three point contest. Now this one is almost at perfection, so I just have to do one little tweak because really we want to see who's the best three-point shooter. Uh, that this competition really accomplishes that. Now this little tweak is ingenious. All you have to do is wait for it. Add WNBA players to the NBA three-point competition. Now, I know what you're saying, you know, a lot of people out there like WNBA players, they're not as good as NBA players, but that's exactly the point. You see, the one thing about sports fans is they love talking ish. LeBron James sucks. Kobe Bryant never passed in his life. James Harden is top five scrub of all time. NBA sports fans will literally talk smack just about anybody. And adding WNBA players will give that extra storyline of can the female players compete with the male players? Like I hate how the NBA treats the WNBA like putting the WNBA players for the celebrity in the celebrity game like for the love of God, get them out of there. It's just an embarrassment to the WNBA in that sort of basketball environment. Get them in that three point contest. Let them shoot against the NBA players. And could you imagine if one wins or gets even close? The marketing, the storylines, the drama, you feeling it now, you feeling that competition, you're feeling the intensity, the pressure. This would make a crazy great atmosphere to watch on TV. Share this video, get it out there. We need this implemented. And the third, the most important event, the marquee event that brings everyone to watch it is the dunk contest. And the fixes that would actually get this change and better is number one fix is smashing that like button, like this video, comment on it, get this video out there and we will fix this. No, 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 but on a serious list, the reason how to fix this is a couple of things we can do. The first problem with the slam dunk contest is the players aren't necessarily warmed up. They can't do their max jump dunks because they can't really get an open layup lines. They're sitting down a lot. They're not fresh. So how do we counteract this? Lower the rims from 10 feet to 9.5. Honestly, they can do probably do better dunks on a lower rim. No one will notice. Just do it. Get it done. Make the NBA contest better. The second way to really go about this is instead of eliminating two people in the first round, eliminate one person in the first round. There's a lot of times that the third dunker gets robbed. Just honestly only eliminate one and have the final round have three NBA slam dunk participants. Trust me, people will still have the person that they think can win in it. It may run the contest a bit longer, but it is worth it a thousand percent. And the big thing about the NBA dunk contest is not that they don't have the best dunkers in the world. And of course there's YouTube out there. So we see all the dunks before, but the really big thing is it's not competitive. Like we need to create a competitive atmosphere that makes it feel like your favorite player could lose, or you don't know who's going to win in the end. You do this by still having everyone only do four dunks. You have three people in the final round. It makes it competitive. You don't know who's going to win and make the last dunk worth double the points. However, there is a catch. Make it one and done. If you miss the dunk, you are finished. You're out. So you can make it like an optional money ball scenario where like you can do a regular ball and you can get have unlimited attempts or you can do that money ball and make it one and done and you're out. This will make it so no matter how far you are behind, you can still steal it in the end and give us that. Oh my God, he could steal it doing a crazy dunk. 
Of course, make some caveat on it where the dunk has to be like at least a 45 to receive the double multiplier. Or if the dunk's only a perfect 50, you get the double multiplier. That will make it so they're not doing some basic right hand dunk to finish. But yeah, if they get a perfect 50 or a perfect 48, give them a double multiplier. That way, that will end the show on a high climactic point. You don't need the best dunks from the best dunkers to make the NBA contest great. You just need to make it competitive, make a storyline, make people on the edge of their seat, make people look forward to the game breaker, lower the rim to make it easier in the athletes that don't get a chance to really warm up and make all these changes and make the last round exciting. I'm telling you guys, this will fix the NBA All-Star Weekend a thousand percent. If you agree with this, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more basketball videos, and of course, share this to get the video out there and get the NBA to take word of this. It's been your lovely Pilot Fly Stewie, and always remember, the best, most brightest investors are the ones that are uneducated, why is that? That's because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. We connect investing videos to pop culture and we do various basketball videos in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. But we, flight crew, have to take off.